why Solano County and why directly around Travis Air Force Base? Solano County is, a, is, a, is an interesting place in that it's a it's, it's at these crossroads of Northern California. It, 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 it has a lot of the, many of the best things that make Calif Northern California, Northern California. But at the same time, because it has been between the, the two metro regions, it's been between the Bay Area and, the, um, and, and, and Sacramento, what I noticed at the time is that um, it hasn't received its fair share of major employers, of investment, of tax dollars, of transportation dollars. And so it was this really special place, but um, it felt like um, if we build a project like this here, we could really bring up the whole area uh, and we could help rectify some of those um, imbalances. And a good example of that is jobs. Uh, what I learned when I started coming to Solano County was just how many people would have to commute uh, an hour and an hour, an hour and a half every day for job. And that seemed like a, like, a, like a situation that we could dramatically improve. And then with regards to Travis Air Force Base, um, we, um, we never had the intention of building a city next to Travis Air Force Base. Uh, we started buying property far away from the base. Eventually we acquired property close to the base because we wanted to be able to work with the base to protect it and to strengthen it. And we felt that if we were doing a large project in the kind of five or 10 miles away from the base, then we would want to control the property next to the base as well so that we could adequately you know, provide the right protections for Travis as well. You've been buying land for over five years. Why the initial secrecy? We felt in the beginning that we were very convinced that there was a project that we could design in this, in this part of the county that could be a real asset for the county and that could work for all of the different stakeholders. And so it could be an asset for Travis, it could work for the agricultural community, it could be great for all of the existing cities. Uh, but we felt that in order to do the project, we, um, we had to be able to design it right. And, and that meant putting things in places where all of those stakeholders would be happy. And the only way to do that was to control um, a large amount of land. And so we wanted to prevent the situation where if we announced the plans prematurely, there would be this reckless speculation rush. And then the county would be dealing with lots of different people proposing lots of different projects. And it would result in disorderly growth and sprawl, which is exactly what um, the county and many of the local stakeholders have been trying to prevent. Do you regret the way that you went about it? No, uh, we, we've been very methodical about it from the beginning and uh, we've, been, uh, we've been very responsive to government agencies when they've come in and they ask us to confirm that there was no Chinese involvement. Uh, and so we've been, we've been quiet until we've, like any other company, when, you, when you're working on a new product or a new release, you want to get everything organized and ready and then you come and you announce the plans and that's what we've done. And what matters is that now we've been working with all of the different cities and the county and all of the stakeholders very actively. What would you say to the idea that you guys are doing this yourself instead of tying on to another city because big tech does not like to play by the existing rules and wants their own thing where they can kind of have more independent control? I would say that uh, we are unlike a lot of the efforts that have come from the, from the tech sector before when it comes to building new cities. Um, many of them have come out and said, well, we're going to reinvent the government and we're going to have a completely different way that it's going to run. We are not looking to do any of that. Uh, we think that government in, uh, in Solano County is very well run, the county is very well run. Uh, we have no plans to build any kind of utopia or any kind of um, city with different governments. We would love to build a great community that is in unincorporated Solano County for a long time and run by the, run by the county. It pays taxes to the county. It helps fund many of the issues locally, such as uh, helping to combat crime and homelessness and, um, and uh, improve the schools. And so in that regard, it's very different than many of the traditional attempts by the technology sector to reinvent cities. Do you guys have enough land right now? Or are you still looking to purchase more? We know an island has recently become available as well. Uh, we have no interest in the island. Uh, we have all of the property that we need. We know that's the goal, but we've talked to many experts that say it's going to be really difficult and almost impossible. Water source out there, not readily available. There's only one two lane road somewhat through that area right now. The infrastructure undertaking is going to be massive out there. Any plans or thoughts on getting that together? New community and the projects we want to propose here actually fits in the larger regional plans for upgrading that same infrastructure. And so um, whether it comes to issues like water, uh, where there have been plans in Solano County and actually in Napa County as well to upgrade the North Bay Aqueduct, uh, which brings water to half a million people in, um, in, in the North Bay. And um, that project hasn't been feasible because there hasn't been a, um, um, the, 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 there hasn't been a critical enough mass of need for, for, uh, for the new project and funding. Uh, similarly, with both Highway 12 and Highway 113, 
there have been plans to improve, the, improve those highways and to reroute them out of, um, out of both Rio Vista and Dixon. Uh, and so what we would hope to do is that our project can be a catalyst to bring those projects forward as part of a larger regional effort. Why start from scratch and not bring these projects and ideas into existing cities and upgrade what already exists? It's both. Uh, many of the team members that are working on this, on this project uh, and many of our investors, in fact, have, have worked on or funded large infill projects um, all over California and, and other parts of uh, the country. Um, we, um, we do have in California a situation where for 40 years we've been underproducing homes and we've been underproducing um, um, all kinds of um, real estate. And um, our conclusion was that in order for us to make a dent in the, in, the, in the situation that we have where so many Californian families, particularly working class families, um, are leaving California, um, we would need to do both. We would need to do infill and we would need to do some very selective, smart, walkable, urban um, uh, greenfield development because otherwise it's just going to take too long. When can we see you break ground? That depends on all the factors, but um, one, of the, um, one of the tragedies in California is that we've really gotten used to and kind of accepted the fact that these big projects take um, uh, 10 years to, to break ground. And, um, and uh, we are very committed to making sure that that's not the case for this project. Uh, and we'll have more to share about that going, going forward. But um, we, we, we've forgotten the human cost of these delays. Uh, and so when it comes to building uh, railways or highways or water infrastructure or, or, or jobs or homes or any of the any of this physical infrastructure in California what we've done is we've um, we, we, we think of them as statistics it's well this project is eight year eight year behind budget um, but this, this, this that statistic has a human cost and so if that project is building a shorter commute or building a project that would cut someone's commute from an hour and a half to 20 minutes, that's a real cost to that, right? And uh, um, my wife and I are young parents, and if we had to commute an hour and a half every day, we would never see um, our kids for breakfast or for dinner. And so for every project in California that takes 10 years from approval to breaking ground, all of the people who would have had a shorter commute because they could have bought a home in the new community or gotten a job in the new community, um, they're never getting those eight years back. Getting the job in eight years doesn't help them because you only get, you only get to tell your two-year-old a bedtime story 365 days in your life and then it's gone. And so this, this resignation that everything in California takes too long uh, is something that we don't accept and we'll be working very hard to change.